Howdy! Hope this finds all my friends out there in YouTube land having a wonderful Christmas season, a great Christmas Eve, and hope you're not all getting snowed in. We're having quite a bit of snow here in central Indiana over the last 24 hours or so, and they say there's more coming. You haven't seen a lot out of me in the last couple of days because Brenda's been sick. Brenda's got a big old case of strep throat. And it's to the point where my throat's bleeding. So um, I've been laying pretty lifeless the last couple of days. But uh, I, I'm getting fidgety from laying around. It's not like me just to lay around all the time. And I, I needed to do something. I needed to get up and be creative for a few minutes. So I decided I'd come over here to the crafty table and do a little wood burning and take a little break from snoozing and healing and, and all that sort of thing. Been forcing the fluids and the vitamin C and the antibiotics and all that good stuff, you know, trying to straighten up a little bit. This is an example of what happens to you when you let drama queens and people that want to boss you around uh, get to you. So. We're trying to get past that and get healed up here. But I've got these uh, Celtic fish that I'd put the design down here on the wood. This is much like the other designs and things that I have been burning for you, where you take the peel and stick transfer and you stick it down there to the wood. And then we're going to take our wood burning tool and we're going to burn the design into the wood, peel the paper off of it. And then we'll do a little painting and a little staining and that sort of thing on it. And uh, you get to see how I do this. If you didn't see the other designs that I did, I don't know that I've got them all in here right now. I think some of them's back in the, in the room where I put the sealer on them. But I do have this piece in here that I did, this little tray sitting here. I think the other ones has already made it back to the other room at this point. But you'll get to see this in here if you stick with me while I burn it. Now, I've got my wood burner. I've had it heating up here. And uh, this is a, I think we decided it was Walnut Hills, didn't we? Let me put the magnifying glass to that little fine print there. A Walnut Hollow. It's a Walnut Hollow wood burner. This is the one I prefer. I've got another one, but I like this one better because it has a control on it where you can set the dial where you want the dial to be as far as the heat is concerned. And there again, I'll warn you that the end of this gets hot. So you do not want to touch that. If you're going to change the tip out on it, you want to take a pair of pliers and pull it out and put that tip in a glass bowl or a metal bowl, something that's not going to catch fire or melt. And then you take your pliers and stick another tip in there if you want to change tips on it. I tend not to change tips very much. Um, this one is called a calligraphy tip. It's got a little, uh, I'll try to get it here where you can see. It's got a little curve on the end of it. So you can turn that different directions to get different types of burns out of that tip. And it works pretty well for everything that I do. Um, if I'm going to do a lot of uh, burning solid burning on something instead of just following lines, then I might go to a flatter tip, a wider flatter tip. But um, this one works pretty good for what I do. And there again, as I've told you in other videos, the first thing you want to do is you want to test it to see how hot it is, make sure that, that you're getting a burn. I always keep a scrap piece of wood around for that. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to follow the lines and you don't press, you just put the wood or the tip down to the wood and then it burns as you drag it along and and I don't push I just drag it along the line and you just put it on there and drag it right along the line you don't have to drag it all the way the length of the line at one time you just drag it however far you want it to go and then lift it up I like to be able to spin the wood around so that I can get different angles on the wood to make sure I keep my lines nice and straight Stay right on the line on the pattern. And that's how we do this. Go right on around that eye. Now wood has 
a grain to it. So you have to be careful with the grain of the wood. If you press down with the tip, it might get caught in the grain and then it'll pull your um, burning tool off kelter and you won't be staying on the lines on the pattern. So that's why you just want to lay it right there on the, the line and then just gently pull it along. You don't press. You let the burning part of the tool do its job. And every so often, you'll need to come back to your little piece of wood and wipe off the tip because that pattern on there is plastic. And that plastic gets stuck on the tip and that messes up your, your tip when you're trying to burn. So you want to keep the tip of your wood burner clean. Wood burners aren't really all that expensive. And they last a long time, so once you get one, you don't need to be thinking about replacing it as long as it's one that you really like. Like I say, I've got two. The first one I started off with did not have a regulator for the temperature control on it. And I wasn't real pleased with that, so I had to spring for a second one. So if you want to learn from what I consider to be kind of a mistake there, <laughs> get you one with a regulator on it. And I don't remember if I actually got this one from Walnut Hollow or if I bought it off of Amazon. I know Amazon carries them. So if you got you some Amazon certificates for Christmas or maybe a little Christmas money and you like the wood burning thing. I got my wood from uh, Factory Direct. You just do a uh, little search for Factory Direct on Google and it should bring it right up for you. I think this is a lot of fun. It makes pretty designs and you can burn on all different kinds of things. You know, if you want to make jewelry, you can wood burn jewelry or keychains or um, you know, if you want to make things for the wall, get wooden blanks, big round ones, you know, that you can do big designs on. You can do all kinds of different designs. Now, these designs that I've got, they came from a place called Wel Welburn Farms, um, Welburn Gourd Farms. Try that on for size, Welburn Gourd Farms. And they have packs of these things for about 10 bucks a pack that have themes to the pack so you just go through and pick the ones that you're interested in doing designs of you get a whole pack of them there's i think about four sheets to the pack and each each sheet has a whole bunch of different designs on them you can get blank ones blank stick and burn sheets and make sure you get them for your kind of printer though because they make them for both the inkjet and for the laser printers and if you're trying to burn the inkjet sheets through your laser printer, it will melt them. So make sure you get the right ones for the kind of printer that you have. And that way you can just pick out your design right there on the internet. Print it off to it. Some of you that have computer artistic talent that can draw on the computer could draw your own designs and then print them off on stick and burn i've never been able to master that talent <laughs> anything i do on the computer trying to to make a design looks like a five-year-old did it so i just kind of leave the designing for the folks that know what they're doing. I'm 
I hope y'all been feeling a lot better than I've been feeling here over the holiday. Man, oh man. I got up Saturday morning and my throat was on fire. Glands all swole up. That ain't no way to be over any time, let alone over the holidays. But I'll say hey to all my YouTube friends out there, my YouTube family. I've seen a lot of videos popping up all day about Christmas and celebrations people have. I don't have any family, so there ain't much of a celebration going on. Wouldn't have been anyway with me being sick, but. I just try to keep myself busy and know that like every other year, it'll be over soon. <laughs> The worst part of this is trying to peel the pattern off of it once you get it burnt. And the reason I say that is because you put it on in one sheet. But after you burn it, every one of these little spots on here, they'll peel off separate. Because you've done burnt a hole through the plastic, see? So it tends to get a little tedious to take all that plastic off of it. And you got to get all the plastic off or when you try to paint it, your paint and your stain won't go to the wood because there's plastic between it and the wood. Puts a barrier in there. And I always try to make sure that I've got all my lines burnt. And inevitably, I tend to miss some and have to go back and burn them back in. But I really try to get them all. Now, there's a little piece of wood grain there, and it wants to move my blade, just even touching it. Got a high spot in there. There we go. I hear a snow plow and across the street at the parking lot for the church, trying to get things ready, I guess, for tomorrow morning. Well, no, wouldn't be tomorrow morning, would it? Tomorrow's Monday. Well, they might be having Christmas services over there at the church. But I sure hear the plow out there dragging. I was born in the wrong climate. I'm not a snow lover. I don't like the snow in the ice. A lot of that is because when I was a kid, oh, I enjoyed it a lot until I hit the fifth grade. I was in the fifth grade when I was at school one day and there come up a big snowstorm. And everybody at the school went to scurry and trying to figure out how to get us kids out of there and get us home. Ice and snow coming down. And um, they got the school buses there, and all the school buses made it out except for three. One of them was mine. 
I lived at the very tail end of the route anyway. We lived way out in the country. And as a result, make a long story a little shorter, I ended up spending a few days at the school sleeping on the gymnasium floor. All the telephone lines was down, electricity was out. So couldn't get a hold of my folks, let them know where I was. And they couldn't find me to figure out where I was, what was going on, until they finally restored some service and got some road graders out to clear the snow off the roads. The last night of it, the bus driver was able to get home and I went with her. I was trying to get all the kids out of the school. And I spent the last night at her house. Her husband wasn't too thrilled with a strange kid in the house. He did, wasn't making me feel very comfortable. I was glad when I was finally able to get home. But that was kind of a traumatic experience for a 10 year old kid. And I've never liked winter since. Winter's a, a harsh mess. We lived on a farm anyway, so, you know, it was always a mess trying to feed and water livestock, everything freezing up breaking your neck on the ice to get to the barn to take care of livestock. People don't appreciate how much work goes into raising your food supply. I remember the trip home from that mess. I was in the pickup truck and the road we lived on was only open one lane. So if there was anything coming at us, we had to back up, try to get to somebody's driveway back up and let traffic through. There was icicles hanging off the power lines, two foot long. Snow was banked up alongside of the road, clear up over the top of the pickup truck. We don't get snows like that anymore, thank goodness. But still, I'm not as young as I used to be, and it bothers me to think about falling, breaking something. Living alone. You don't want that to happen. It's hard to take care of yourself when you're all busted up. Broke my foot here a while back. And that was hard enough. I'd hate to think of breaking a hip or <laughs> something that would really immobilize me. See, on these little tiny lines, it's just a matter of touching the burning tip to the wood. And it burns them right in. I like burning these little small ones because they're good for so many different things. You know, you can put a little hanger on them to hang on the wall. And it makes a nice little gift for somebody, or you can inlay it. In a wooden box, make make a pretty little jewelry box out of it. You can set it on top of a plaque that maybe you've done some other wood burning and stuff around the edges of. Make kind of a uh, frame around it.
if you're into making furniture, you can wood burn pieces like this and inlay it like in the top of a table or something. Um, tip's getting kind of gunky there, so we're going to wipe that off a little bit. There we go. Let's clean it up just a tad. All right. Just checking my design, making sure that I've got all the lines burnt in, and I believe I got them all this time. Woohoo! <laughs> all right, now. I think I'm done with the wood burner, so I'm going to turn it off before I set it down over here off to the side, making sure that the tip does not touch anything because it is hot and you don't want to burn nothing. Now, sit there real nice. And I'll get my little sharp tool here and we'll go to pulling up the the plastic. Oh, I see a place I missed. Son of a gun. <laughs> Luckily, the tool ain't cool down much, so we can come right back in and get that place right there. All right, let's hope that's the only one I missed. Now we'll turn it back off. Okay. And every time, whoops, every time I pull a piece loose, I put it in my trash bag because that stuff's sticky and it'll stick all over everything. Well, I'm just having a heck of a time here. All right. There we go. Where these lines were so close together there on the tail it just kind of fried that plastic so we'll just scrape it loose off of there I probably will have to turn that iron back on. I see a couple places there that probably need touched up a little bit. But we'll worry about that once we get this plastic off there. Once you have the basic part of the design down, if you need to go back in and touch it up a little bit, it usually doesn't amount to a whole lot. Pretty easy to touch it up. Because you got an idea of what your design was. So there's a little place there that it didn't burn. 
So we'll come back and catch all them little places. There's another little place right there. That many little tiny lines, it's easy to miss one once in a while. Gonna remove every one of them little scales off of the fish one at a time. thinking earlier about Christmases when I was a kid, you know, some somebody posted something, I guess it was on Facebook or someplace, about their favorite Christmas present when I was a kid. And I guess I had a couple different ones that I liked real well. When I was a little girl, the big deal was to have a tiny tears doll a little baby doll that you gave it a bottle and put water in that bottle and that baby doll would cry it had tear ducts and then got a little older I enjoyed my easy bake oven that was a big deal. Our little girl needed an easy bake oven, and I loved mine because I could bake cakes in it for my daddy. I like to cook for my daddy. Let me tell you, I fed him his share cake. And then when I was a teenager, one thing that I got a really big charge out of, they had this deal. I don't know if any of you have ever seen them or not. You can leave me some comments on this video and let me know if you've ever seen these things. It's uh, creepy crawlers. And then it also had some molds and stuff for you. You bake this rubber stuff and uh, you make a little troll head type things that you could put on your pencils on the tops of your pencils and i enjoyed playing with that stuff I like to twist it in the light just a little bit, make sure that I'm getting all the plastic off of it. And inevitably, I will leave some pieces of plastic on it. It happens every doggone time I do this. But I try my best to make sure I get the plastic off before I go trying to paint. It's much easier to get it off now than it is when you're trying to lay paint on it. And finding out that your paint ain't getting to the wood. Now you wouldn't have thought there'd been any plastic in there, but when I scraped it, the plastic came right up off of it. <laughs> Yeah. 
And I'm going to go ahead and flip my gun back on here and let it go to heating back up again because I see she's going to need a little bit more fire. All right. Okay. You silly goose. Well, I'm going to have to give it a second here to fire up. Work on another part of it while that's doing its thing. I guess now the kids pretty much all like their electronic toys. We didn't have no electronic toys when I was a kid. The closest we came to an electronic toy was an Etch-a-Sketch. Or a Slinky. Imagine with as much snow as we're getting, there's probably plenty of kids that's getting some kind of sleds, and plastic um, gosh, I don't even know what they're called, toboggans, I guess. They'll be out by tomorrow afternoon on a toboggan. Any place you miss, you just come back in with the tool and go right back over it. Burn it right on in there. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So far, so good. Okay, now I'm going to turn it back off again. And take off some more of the material and I'll be dogged if there ain't a spot right there I missed all right y'all probably saw that didn't you <laughs> you're saying why didn't she see that I saw it
Okay, we'll try to turn it off again. There's another spot right there. Hmm. Sometimes you gotta let the iron heat up a little first, though. It, it cools down fairly quick. I mean, it's not like I'd want to touch it or anything, but you know, for actually burning the wood, wood takes the higher temperature on the gauge. So, it's starting to come up. Come on, little tip. Heat up, heat up, heat up. Come on, little spot right there. It needs, needs a little more fire. And it's starting to heat up. I'm not pressing down, just dragging along the wood. Get it to burn in there. And that darkened it up a little bit. Helped it some. All right, now we'll turn it back off again. Still got more plastic on there to take off. Once we get all that plastic off, then I'll paint it. And I'll be dogged if I don't see another place on there that needs it. All right, turn her back on again. Let that heat up while I keep peeling here. I'm getting a pile of plastic up here, so I'll get that off my table. Don't want to get that wrapped up in my paint or anything when I get ready to do my painting. Sometimes you got to get right down in there to get it up because you burnt the lines on and melted the plastic, so <laughs> it gets a little cantankerous. But when you get done, you got something pretty, so stay at it. Until you get it all cleaned off. I'm going to have to get me a drink here. My throat is burning like it's on fire.
Mm, excuse me. Now, twist it a little bit in the light to see where the rest of the plastic is because I know there's always another piece. <laughs> I think peeling this stuff off is my least favorite part of the entire job, but it's part of the process. And if you like these intricate designs, you're going to have a lot of it to do. Twist it around because when the light hits it, hits that plastic, it glistens a little bit and you can see it better. So get it there where the light hits it. And we can see what we've missed. Like I say, every scale has plastic on it, so you have to make sure you go ever, over every one of them. Get that stuff lifted off of there. Make sure you got all your lines drawn on. If there's any lines you don't think are dark enough, this would be the time to go back over them. Anything you don't look think looks quite complete, complete it now. By George, I think that's looking pretty good. I still see a little plastic on there, but for the most part, I think we got it whipped. Hot dog. When I decide to put the paint to it, I want the paint to stick. <laughs> I'm not sure if you all can see that on the camera or not. Probably not, where when it shows up 
as being just a little lighter, a little more glisteny. And then when you peel it off, you see the wood tone. But you gotta get it off of every little piece. So when I look at it, you know, I'm looking at every scale, every piece of it, every piece of the tails and the fins, turning it so that if there's anything on there, I'm going to see it. There's a piece right there. You really have to be persistent and go over this side same way. Check out every little nook and cranny. See, there's some there. Make sure we get it off of every piece. Now I'll go get the wood burner back again. See some that didn't take. See that? It burnt on the plastic, but it didn't burn through the plastic. Mm hmm. Well, fire back up. Probably should have just left it on. I don't like to leave the wood burner on if I can help it. Oh, shoot. It's a good habit in uh, as to turning it off so you don't leave it on. Every piece has to be gone over. There's more right there. Putting it with no plastic being left on there. Take up here where you can see it. I had to move it to get it in the light where I could get a reflection on it. This part right here is a perfect example of how light I use it on there because, you know, it didn't even go through the plastic, all right? <laughs> I don't push it. I just let the burner do the burning. You can always come back anything that you missed on it. Very easy to just burn it right down on there. And I'll just let the tip of the wood burner do its thing. And I'll just kind of look the whole thing over, see if there's anything else that doesn't suit me on there. Anything else that I need to touch up. And it looks pretty good to me. I'm not even seeing any plastic left on it, so I'm pretty sure. Oh, there's plastic right there. Uh-huh. All right, now turn this thing back off. And we'll go over it one more time to make sure all the plastic is off of there. Right in here is where I was seeing it. So be sure we get all the plastic scraped off. see any plastic shimmering on there just take your time twist it around look at all parts of it and the light 
and make sure you got it all off of there. And if you wanted to, take some real mild sandpaper and go over it. I've got some here. This is a this is 400 grit, and I just go over it with something real light just to make sure that I got the plastic off of it. And then feel it. That, that plastic will feel real slick as compared to the wood. Not that the wood has any real grit to it, but it's grittier than a slick piece of plastic. So you should be able to tell that you got it when you do that. Now, next thing I'm going to do is get all the rest of this plastic that I raked off of it off of my desk. Then I'm going to get me a little piece of paper towel. I'm going to get a little alcohol. On my paper towel. Not much, just a little bit. And I'm going to wipe it down. Alcohol dries quick. That's one reason for using the alcohol. Another reason for using alcohol is that it takes the, the grit right off of the wood. Anything from the plastic. See on you see this paper towel, there's a little piece piece of plastic it picked up. And anything from the sanding, you know, any little pieces of wood from the sanding or burning pieces or anything. Takes it right off of there, cleans it right up. So there it is. Now I'm gonna paint it. And I'm gonna start in painting my background on there. Because I'm going to paint the whole piece. Usually I just paint the design. This time I'm going to do something different. Now I believe that I would like to paint my background black, I think, on here. And I'm going to use alcohol ink. I've got a little piece of paper here. And I'm going to put a little dropper of the alcohol ink on my paper like that put the cap on the bottle so I don't spill it and I'm going to take these micro brushes that's what a micro brush looks like it has a little micro tip on it a little fuzzy tip dip it in my black paint the background's going to be black so I'm going to start right in here around my fish. And outline the part right there. All around my design. Lay the background in first. I see these micro tips, they hold a lot of ink, so you don't have to go back dipping them constantly. I like them because they got such a fine tip to them for getting in these little nooks and crannies without getting it up in your design. Now, if you noticed how I did that, I outlined the area that I was going to paint first, and then I filled in. And I'll go back and check and make sure I got it all up against whatever it was that I needed to get it up against there in the lines. Touch it up if I need to, just like that. Now, we got a little place down in here between the fish. So we'll come up in there with the micro brush and we'll get that little part. And 
and we got a little area here between the fish and the tail. Okay, that is all of the area inside the fish part. The rest of it is all outside the area. So I'm going to outline my fish. To separate the fish from the background area. Now you see as this dries, if it looks like it needs just a tad more paint put to it, put it on there. This wood is porous, so it will be soaking up a little bit of paint. That's to be expected. It's what wood does. Now I've got my fish outlined and I can start coloring in all the outside of this. And I can move up to something larger at this point. So I'm going to take a Q-tip. I've got more area to cover. Since we already have the outline put in, we don't have to worry about getting up close and personal with the design at this point. I'm going to take this all the way out to the edge of the wood. Now, I could have stained this had I wanted to, but I've showed you how to do that before. I thought it would be nice to show you something a little different here. Like I say, if you see it, you know, soaking it up a little too much, making it a little too light, go back over it again. There ain't no shame in that. Yeah, I need a little more paint, I think, on my little paper palette here. So I'm going to put a little more of that black ink down. But you can see it don't take a whole lot. I mean, that's like, well, about, that's about a full dropper full now. It was like a half a dropper the first time, about a half dropper this time. So it won't take a whole lot, this ink, to cover it. Now, you'll see there are, this is lightening up over here, you know, wood soaking it up. So we'll go back over that and darken it up just a little bit. Keep this up here where you can see it.
any place you see that looks light, just tap it in there with your with your swab. I like painting with Q-tips. They, they cover a nice large area for me. Do the job. Easy to work with. Inexpensive. Not ruining paint brushes and stuff that way. Okay, now. The, even the alcohol ink that was on my little micro brush has done dried at this point. Now, we got to do some fish scales. So, I'm going to go in with some gold on my fish scales. Put a little gold over here on the palette. Oops. Maybe we can get it where you can see it. There it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Another drink. Now I'm going to take my micro brush. I'm going to dip it in that. I'm going to work on these fish scales a little bit. And we're not going to do all of them in gold. We'll do some in another color. So it's like every other one is going to be done in gold here. Every other row or something. There we go. You don't want to put so much on there that you don't see your burn marks. I'll be able to tell that it's been wood burnt. Let's see here. We'll go in here. Now this is a metallic gold. Liquitex, alcohol ink, and then we've got some sections in here. I don't want to hit. <coughs> mm, mercy. Yeah. Put some stripes on his tail down here. There we go. And I'm thinking I want to do the tail with some gold up here. This one's tail can be gold too. All right, now we've got some stuff up here on the next to do. We've got some bands.
All right. Now, I think I'm ready to try. Some of this um, bronze color. Put a little of that down on the palette over there. And again, I'll try to get it turned where you can see it. And I'm going to take a paper towel. I'm going to wipe off my micro brush real good. So you can keep using that micro brush over and over again. You just want to make sure that you get the previous color of ink out of it. Eventually they do wear out and you got to stop, but you know, for a job like this, you can do it several times. See, I probably should have put some up here on the collar too. That well, we can come back. We'll just go ahead and get some bronze that laid in there right now. I'll get these little parts down here in bronze. Well, I got a little heavy there on it. Wipe that down. Come back in and pick some of that up. Drag it across. There we go. Straighten it up some. I got some of this gold a little thick over here, so I'm going to take a little bit of that off, wipe that off on my paper towel. Clean the tip of my brush up a little bit. There we go. All right. Then <clears throat> I can come in with this gold and get this up in here where I wanted it. And we'll come over to this side. Lay some in there. All right, I'll wipe the brush off again. Come back for the bronze. There we go with that side. Okay. We'll come back and get those heads at the end of it. Okay, that's looking pretty doggone good, I think. So far, so good. Now, I see some places it's going to need just a little touching up where the wood's soaking it up. But, I mean, as far as the color goes, I think it's looking pretty doggone good. Where it's soaking it up shows more on the camera than it's showing in person. Because I can look over here at the, what shows on the the camera. 
and it's any places that are light show up a lot more on the camera than they are right here in front of me. Maybe it's just the way the light's shining on it for me here on the desk. I can take a little of this bronze and go around these edges here. Probably hear my cockatiel. He's over there acting up. When I did my new show on YouTube, he was my co host for part of it. <laughs> He thinks he's got something to say, whether he does or not, I'll tell you. We'll come right around the tail here with a little of the bronze just to highlight it up a little bit. Now let's get a Look at this on the camera. Okay, we need to touch up some gold on there. It looks like sucked up some of the gold, and that's okay. We've got plenty of it over here, so we can come back in and hit it again with some gold. Any place that wanted to lighten up just a touch too much. Suck up the paint. It's all right. It don't take much to touch them up. Since it's alcohol ink, it'll dry pretty quick.
bronze is laying in there pretty good on this being a little darker color helped it okay now take a look at it in the camera lens and according to this got an area right there that needed a little bit matter of fact probably come right on in there over top of all of that so I really don't want wood showing through it All needs to show painted. See, and oddly enough, I don't see that looking at it eyeball to eyeball here, but I see it in the camera where it shows up. That's weird. Maybe it's just a reflection of the, the paint on it or something. Reflection of the light off of the paint or something and I don't see it face to face, but I can see it in the camera lens Interesting how that works Okay, and right underneath that, that bronze needs darkened up. There, looks better. And then down here on the tail, this part needed darkened up a little bit. Wipe that off, come back and pick up a little more gold. And over here, Showing that it needs a little more. So we'll do that right there. Catch this one right here. Okay, that's looking much better. See, maybe just a little bit down here on this tail. It could be touched up a tad. And I think it's looking pretty good. Now we got these heads to do yet. <clears throat> and I think that I want to do their heads in silver. Put a touch of that down here. It ain't going to take but a touch. And pick that up. Do their little fishy heads. I'm going to try to avoid the eye because I will come back in with black on the eyeball. I want to pull some of that off of the mouth where it was burnt. I want the wood burn to show through. That's looking pretty good. 
Blend it in there real good. Little silver fishy heads. This is a metallic silver on, again by Liquitex. Alcohol ink. And again, I'll pull a little of that paint off there around the mouth. So that the burning shows through, it's looking good. And then we want to do just a touch of black. And the black that I have in my palette is gone away. So we'll put just a just a half a drop on the palette. We'll pick that up with a micro brush. And tap that in around the eye. I'm just tapping it around the burn on the board. Then I'll let this dry, and tomorrow I will hit it with some clear gloss sealer. It's just a touch put right in through there to differentiate the fish, which is supposed to be coming up there to kiss. There we go. That's looking good right there. All right. And that's our Celtic fish painted up. Metallic Liquitex alcohol inks. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas Eve and a great Christmas day. And I hope that uh, y'all stay healthy. Don't get this strep throat like I got. And we'll be seeing you Monday night on the live show if I don't get bored out of my gourd and decide that I'm going to do some more videos for you. With that, we're going to shut her down. And just remember, Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda. Bye.